Hi, everyone. Uh, let's get started. Uh, I'm here to present an interesting uh, session. Uh, Pranode API Server Proxy, Expand the Cluster's uh, Scale and uh, Stability. Uh, I'm Wei Zhou Lan, and uh, my co-speaker, iCyber, uh, we are from uh, Dao Cloud, uh, Shanghai, in China. And Iceberg is uh, responsible for the API server uh, proxy while I worked on the network part. We worked together to uh, complete an interesting uh, future shared in this session. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Iceberg can, cannot be uh, attended in person uh, because only to the visa issue. So <clears throat> for the first half of this session, uh, it will be explained uh, through his uh, pre-recorded uh, pre uh, audio. And uh, at the second half, I will personally uh, explain the part that uh, I'm responsible for. OK, uh, first of all, um, let me briefly uh, explain the content of this uh, session. Our goal is to uh, expand the cluster's uh, scale and stability. Uh, as we know, as the cluster uh, scales up, we may encounter, we may encounter uh, various problems. Uh, and uh, this session just uh, focuses on uh, op optimization of the API server. Uh, then I will introduce uh, a solution to re uh, reduce the stress of API server by a proxy, uh, which can be deployed in uh, global or regional nodes uh, to proxy uh, access to API server. Uh, finally, I will explain how to uh, proxy uh, API server requests transparently. OK, let's uh, listen to what uh, Iceberg want to say. Think about it. When you are not using control to control or view the cluster, can your API server rest? No. Who is constantly requesting your API server? It's the controllers. And to describe what follows more simply, we'll start by referring to our informer based on components as controllers. They drive the entire Kubernetes and the declarative, declarative resources. For example, your scheduler, control manager, Kuba proxy, and so on. Yes? The custom controllers that are constantly being added as your business needs grow. Kubernetes uses Open API to organize resources and uh, give you the freedom to operate cast resources. Informer based on the list of what requests always you to implement a controller that listen and uh, reconciles resources. These three usually designs give developers the freedom to implement the features they want. But this has also led to fragmentation of the Kubernetes ecosystem. We are a wide variety of features in Kubernetes cluster are implemented as controllers. Count the number of the project and the extensive land scope and take a look at your cast. There are no less than 10 components that use informer. And these components are not controllable by ops people or Kubernetes. Sometimes we have to deploy them on each node as required to fulfill the requirements, and sometimes we can't control which resources these components are listening on, and this, unless you don't use the component. These controllers running in different pods are often listening on duplicated resources as well. These are uncontrollable controllers running in formal based uh, implementations are the direct cause of the stress on the API server. They are using informer to list and watch the API server and ever change results frequently. But are controllers necessarily stressing the API server? No. If you have a small cluster, your API server can usually handle it. However, 
as the cost of skills and the number of Kubernetes resources and nodes increase. The API server also needs to handle more resource creation update and uh, deletion requests and set them to each controller listening to that resource type. Remember from the previous PPT that controllers are not user controllable. You have to run them according to the documentation and the component requirements. And there is no way to expect that each component will run optimally or that some of the components will not take care of the pressure on your cluster. Many projects require a repeat to be deployed on each node, such as CSI, CNI projects, and many projects that include node agents. As your node grow, so do their replicates. 10 replicates if you have 10 nodes. 5,000 replicates if you have 5,000 nodes. And they need to utilize the informer to maintain and listen to the same set of resources, even if they don't trigger resource changes. Note that you don't usually have just one project running controllers on every node. And this problem becomes much more difficult to control in a real environment. Of course, the API server also provides flow control and uh, API priority to limit requests in order to ensure stability. But it also limits and uh, sacrifices the stability and the availability of some applications. After all, they sometimes reserve HTTP code too many requests. We need to find a way to share the pressure of the API server so that more controllers can work properly. So we added an API server cache proxy component. It proxy our API server requests and uh, forwards uh, forward resource change read requests and uh, unimplemented requests to the API server. For read requests such as get list and uh, watch, the, ca the cache proxy returns its own cached resources and uh, unlike the API server's cache, does not pass through to the next level. API server tries to use cache as much as possible. But in large-scale clusters, the serialization of resource response and the conversion of resource versions due to a large number of requests are also affecting the stability of API server. Now, we control read requests in the API server cache proxy so that the API server are forced on read requests and uh, manageable number of list and watch requests from cache proxy to maintain the cache. Horizontal scaling of the API server cache proxy also allows request pressure to be spread across the nodes and nodes. There are two caches within the cache proxy. One is a total resource cache built using the informer, which is actually an inert triggered cache that doesn't maintain a cache for resources that haven't been requested. And you can set the duration of the cache to stop the informer from listening when no resources are requested for a long time. Alternatively, you can configure default cached resources which will be cached by the form of the proxy stars even if they haven't been requested yet. Another type of cache is a temple cache due to read requests from the proxy. The proxy saves the resources of read requests to the temple cache, which is checked first in a read request. Avoid the strange case of not found due to cache delay and Query directly from the informal cache after creating a new resource. We 
catch policy can be deployed in a variety of ways and uh, scenarios, but most of the time, it's necessary to assess the current situation of controllers in the cluster. For example, what are the types of duplicate resources that different controllers are listening to? The catch policy can be deployed in each node, or it can be deployed in the form of a zone, so that the controllers of each node in the zone can connect to the catch policy to alleviate the pressure of requests brought about by the expansion of nodes. Many controllers listen to duplicate resources by dividing them into nodes or zones. The duplicate result traffic can be controlled within the node or zone to avoid wasting bandwidth between the master node and other nodes or zones. Uh, thanks for Iceberg's explanation. We clarified that the need to implement uh, a transparent API server proxy one of the uh, key issues here is how to redirect the service and uh, forward API server to the proxy. Uh, we initially sort of uh, know the local DNS approach used in the community. It modifies the Kubernetes DNS configuration, so the DNS server of the pod points to a virtual address 169 and uh, know the local DNS will bind this link local IP address to the each node, enabling it to intercept DNS requests. However, <coughs> we, we concluded that uh, this implementation does not meet our requirements. It is uh, intrusive to the configuration of the cluster and the containers uh, that cannot achieve true transparent proxy in certain scenarios. Uh, when the no local service fails, uh, the policy request cannot cannot automatically uh, fall back to the original service. Therefore, we decided to abandon this approach. So, <coughs> afterwards, we looked into the salience approach. Uh, pro it uh, provides the local redirect direct, uh, policy based on eBPF. Uh, perfectly uh, achieving transparent uh, redirection. Um, however, we did not adopt the Cilium. One hand, uh, I think uh, our API server proxy solution aims to remain independent of a specific CNI to maximize uh, uh, applicability. On the other hand, uh, as a member of Cilium uh, community, I personally uh, feel that uh, while Cilium is very powerful and uh, impre impressive project, its uh, extensive functionality comes with uh, numerous uh, configuration parameters. The interdependency among these parameters can be uh, a little bit uh, complex. Uh, that would be hard for the newcomers. So. <coughs> Therefore, I, uh, I hope to reference Cilium's uh, implementation to uh, develop a, a CNI independent load balancer with eBPF. Uh, An important point is that we believe eBPF has matured uh, sufficiently and it is already a mainstream solution in both Linux and uh, CNCF. Mm, its advantages has been discussed in many community talks, and there are numerous projects uh, leveraging this technology. <coughs> so, therefore, I de developed an open source project called Balancing, which implements CNI independent and eBPF based load balancer solution. Anything I can work with Balancing. Uh, including underlying I like uh, Mike Villain, uh, SLV. Uh, to be specific, balancing handles service resolution and uh, while the CNI ensure, ensures basic connect 
activity among the containers. Uh, balancing not only provides no local service uh, redirection, but also aims to perform more uh, innovative uh, tasks. It is uh, composed of a controller department and uh, an agent demon set. Balancing is supposed to uh, run in a Kubernetes cluster and uh, as well as on bare metal machines, uh, either as a container or uh, binary. It uh, offers load balancing uh, resolution for both inter-cluster and intra-cluster service. Um, let's uh, look at its, uh, its future. Uh, firstly, I think it could uh, run in any single environment, uh, providing essential functionality for service resolution. Uh, often referred to as crew proxy replacement. The latest uh, release uh, supports service resolution for ports, and the future release could adjust service resolution for node ports. Uh, secondly, uh, balancing um, implements enhanced uh, local redirection and uh, support policy that uh, apply, apply only on some specific nodes using node label selector. Uh, thirdly, it uh, introduced a new global load balancing strategy, which uh, facilitates load balancing across intra-cluster and uh, inter-cluster service. Uh, for instance, it can function in environments like environmental, uh, 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 Kubernetes, uh, I think, uh, uh, for, e for instance, it can function, uh, also can work in Kube Edge. Uh, in upcoming release, releases, I believe this strategy could enable uh, uh, cross-cluster service access. Uh, finally, it uh, uh, provides a flexible uh, policy uh, definition, allowing IP customization both uh, front end and uh, back end point end point for load balancing. Uh, this page illustrates the principle of how C group EPP have handles redirection resolution. Uh, similar implementations can be found in community projects like uh, Calico, uh, Cilium, and KPNG. On one hand, the Balancing agent loads eBPF program into the kernel to manage redirection resolution. On the other hand, it updates uh, the forwarding rules uh, within the eBPF map. Uh, the, the rules establish the mapping relationship between front end and the back end addresses. When an application in a container makes a connect system call, uh, the kernel's uh, processing flow invokes EPPF program. If the destination IP address matches a rule in the EPPF map, the EPPF program uh, transparently modifies the desti destination address to desired backend service address. Anything I can then subsequently uh, handle packet forwarding. So uh, this, is, this page, it uh, explains how to uh, implement a redirection for a Pernode API server agent. When an application initiates an uh, API server call, the EPPI program in the kernel redirect it, it to uh, no local proxy. If the no local proxy fails, the EPPI program uh, Force back to uh, forward this request uh, uh, directly to the API server. This approach offers transparent uh, resolution, high availability, and uh, independ independence uh, from any uh, specific CNI. Uh, this page demonstrates another balancing strategy of global redirection. 
compared with no local redirection, this global strategy can help internal and uh, external application to redirect the service to any backend. It supports multiple uh, resolution ways. First, it can resolve uh, the service to backend to the backend port IP. For example, of use case, it can help external client to reach the cluster service in underlisting or overlisting I propagating port subnets via BGP. A second, it can resolve the service to the port node IP and host port uh, suitable for overlisting scenarios. Third, it can resolve the service to the node's external IP and a mapped port over the bad balancing, uh, making it uh, applicable in a wider range of uh, uh, scenarios. Therefore, it can be used for communication of both intercluster and inter and uh, uh, intercluster service, offering a new solution for scenarios such as uh, bare metal, Kubernetes, and uh, multi and multi cluster service communication. In contrast, in contrast, um, I think. A uh, traditional solution like a node pod or load balancer introduce uh, forwarding nodes, uh, which can cause some uh, issues sometimes, uh, such as uh, exhausting the source pod of source net, uh, forwarding performance issue. Uh, we maybe you have difficulty in chasing packet experiencing nets. So this comparison is not to indicate that this classic. Uh, solution are uh, inefficient, uh, ineffective, uh, but rather to highlight that client side load balancing can avoid these issues, and make it making it uh, suitable for simple use cases. Uh, with with global redirection, uh, node local redirection, and uh, crew proxy replacement. The transparent API server proxy can be implemented with multiple strategies as needed. Uh, for example, in some scenarios, no local redirection might occur on all global and regional nodes forwarding requests to a uh, node proxy, as shown in the left of the picture. On other regional nodes, global redirection can be applied uh, uh, forwarding uh, requests to the regional API server proxy as shown in the right of the picture. Meanwhile, uh, nodes running critical service could apply no uh, redirection at all. With um, uh, multiple redirection strategies, uh, different nodes across regions can exhibit various uh, redirection behaviors as needed. The cache proxy proxies the API service request and uh, it needs to be able to accept all the requests that the API server can accept. Note that the cache proxy is not a Kubernetes API server and its code does not force on the overlap with the API server. But if then think about what it can be during the proxy process. For example, to make it more secure for untrusted nodes to join the cluster, we can set permissions on the proxy so that when all the controllers in a node are connected to the proxy, their access to resources is limited by the proxy's permissions. Even if the controllers are using a service, a service account with higher permissions, we can also use the cache proxy to build the Truman Show within Kubernetes. We can add policies to the proxy so that users can only fetch and handle resources with specific labels or notations. And the full amount of resources these controllers can see is only a portion of, a portion of the resources that, uh, that are filtered by the policy, they never see the full amount of 
resources. Of course, this approach only handles isolation at the API level and can probably be thought of as a lightweight virtual cluster environment. Okay, that is everything. In, re in uh, retrospect, we implemented two open source projects to realize an interesting idea. We are not quite sure if it, its actual, uh, actual requirements will meet uh, expectation, but uh, we believe that uh, the two open source projects can play different roles uh, if uh, more developers in the community identify with it, we hope uh, it, this can uh, eventually be applied in any production environment. Uh, only to Isabel's uh, absence, I might not uh, be able to answer some question on his behalf. So uh, I would speak the QA and uh, please feel free to reach out to me in person afterwards. Thank you guys. Thank you.